Real sparkly. As you can tell, it's gray and it's wet. I've just run the dogs. Until I run the dogs, it's chaos in my house. They are ready. They are ready to relieve some stress, some built up anxiety. They need to be physical. Why? Dogs are physical animals, much like humans. As I've said numerous times before, we are physical beings in a world full of psychological stressors. And we can't escape them in our day-to-day -day life, in our perverse, modern, civilised world. So what happens when you've got low testosterone? All of those stresses and strains? Oh, God, they become overwhelming, don't they? You get low mood, anxious, sometimes panic attacks. You can even become suicidal. So we place a massive emphasis on improving mental well-being, addressing happiness. What is that? A destination? No, it's an illusion. Get on with it and earn your reward. Wake up motivated, driven, determined to succeed and earn your reward. Then you will achieve calmness, contentment and peace. Because until my dogs have had their run, they are chaotic. When they've had their run, they are calm. I'm gonna feed them some chicken and that's gonna make them happy. So, testosterone, does that automatically improve brain function? Well, hopefully a carefully well-balanced TRT protocol, which is microdosing testosterone, cypionate and HCG daily, because why? Hormones follow a diurnal pattern, day, night, day, night, day, night. So we want to mimic what? Yeah, physiology, how your body functions. The best way of doing that yeah, is what? Daily injections. We want stable levels. That's all we care about. No, we want to mimic physiology. So pharmacokinetics, we can achieve stable levels, but by the very nature of injecting, you are gonna cause a subtle peak and trough. So when should you inject? Yes, in the morning, because it causes a spike. It's all quite common sense, really. If you have an understanding of the HPG axis, you will hopefully realize that testosterone monotherapy is perhaps suboptimal. Is it suboptimal to the point of not any good? No. For most people, it's perfectly acceptable and perfectly good. And some people prefer testosterone monotherapy than testosterone and HCG. Now, why is that? HCG does not suit everybody. And I don't place everybody on HCG. Who don't I place on HCG? Those with anxiety that is grumbling in the background. Not grumbling in the background, it's there, obvious. Sometimes I know that HCG will worsen anxiety. Why is that? Because we talk about TRT not being TRT and TRT actually being HRT hormone replacement therapy. And if you give testosterone on its own, it's gonna suppress the pituitary, releasing LH and FSH down to the testicles. And we wanna reduce, we wanna reproduce the LH with HCG to preserve testicular function and as much natural physiology as possible. And we know that there are LH receptors in the brain, so we wanna preserve cognitive function and libido with HCG. But it's not perfect. Why is it not perfect? because LH is released in a pulse style manner down to the testicles. So that neurostimulation that you get from the LH is not constant. With the HCG, it is. Now, do we adjust the dose to mitigate circumstances? Well, no, not really, because the optimal dose is the optimal dose. Now, does that mean we give an optimal dose for fertility? Well, we give an optimal dose for hormone replacement therapy. For my guys seeking fertility, I start them on a slightly more aggressive dose of HCG because really the most optimal HRT dose is perhaps 80% of what you would give 
for a fertility protocol. And once those guys are success successfully conceived, and we have well over 60 conceptions with HRT, we reduce their dose back down. Why don't we keep it back up there? Well, as we've already said, LH is normally released in a pulsatile manner. HCG must have a constant level due to the laws of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. We understand that constant stimulation of the LH receptor is gonna cause constant testosterone production. Is that a bad thing? Is that a good thing? We follow a diurnal pattern. Well, it's good and bad. So we're constantly anabolic. Life is about what? Balance. What also happens in the testicles? Well, yes, the aromatase enzymes located in the testicles. So you are going to get conversion of testosterone to estrogen. Does that cause excess estrogen? In the vast majority of patients, no, with a proper TRT dose. I'm not on an AI. Most people aren't on an AI. Lots of people on the internet are on AIs because they can't get dialed in. It is what it is. So careful dose titration under the supervision of a clinician that knows what he's doing. So HCG. The HCG also, as we've said before, stimulates the luteinizing hormone. Uh, so it re replicates the luteinizing hormone, but it stimulates the luteinizing hormone receptor in the brain. So we've said HCG will improve mental well-being and libido. Again, constantly stimulating the neurosteroidal pathways. If you have underlying anxiety, that may not be the best option for you. So sometimes guys can have excess anxiety as a result of HCG. So when considering TRT, microdosing testosterone, sipping it and HCG is the best way of doing it, but it not, might not be the best way for you. So do talk to your prescribing clinician Allow him to decide with you what's going to be best for you. What I do with some guys who I start on testosterone monotherapy is I introduce HCG down the line. Now, it's a little bit topsy-turvy because obviously with testosterone monotherapy, you get them to an optimal dose and they go, well, still don't feel particularly good. Everything's in check. My lifestyle, my diet, my training. Can we consider HCG? Yes, of course but we are going to have to titrate the dose of testosterone down because the HCG produces intratesticular testosterone. So again, this must be done under close supervision by your prescribing doctor because we don't want super, super physiological levels because harm can happen as a result of that. Excess neurostimulation. Banging in 300 milligrams of testosterone is not physiological. For anybody, give me a break. The, the normal person produces between six and 10 milligrams a day. Add on the ester, obviously, when you're calculating dose. But who's normal? Well, what is normal? Lots of my guys need higher doses. Some of my guys need up to 25 milligrams of testosterone supinate, sometimes along eight, alongside HCG. And what do they get with that? Normal levels. What are normal levels? Well, the reference range is retarded. Okay, yeah, testosterone levels are dropping, but physiology is not changing because we're not devolving. We're just sicker. We live in a sick society. So physiology hasn't changed. So most people feel best with a free T between 0.5 and 0.85. When we see natural levels above 40, they always, and I mean always, have raised SHBG. Now, why are they having blood tests? Well, they don't feel very good. So these high testosterone levels that some people think, oh yeah, we want to aim for this. Nonsense. Because these guys are having screening blood tests, finding out paradoxically, rather than low testosterone, they have high testosterone, but they have high SHBG, which is causing the issue. So look to address SHBG. I've done videos on this before. So I'm not going to do another one. I might do one in the future. So hormones follow a bell-shaped curve. So we have a 95% confidence interval. 2.5% of you can be below or above it. 
but most people feel best between 0.5 and 0.85. Hormones are dependent. They're not independent. Whether that relationship is direct or indirect, they are dependent. And what is life all about? <laughs> yeah, well, one more time, balance. Anabolic versus catabolic. Anabolic, associated with parasympathetic. Catabolic, associated with sympathetic. So we go back to fight or flight in a world full of anxiety. What are we, what are we, what are we firing? Adrenaline, noradrenaline, cortisol. It's crushing us. It's crushing our testosterone levels. Our testosterone levels get replaced with TRT. What then? I still don't feel good. Are you looking to address your lifestyle, reducing stress by coping with it, dealing with it, compartmentalizing it? Are you, are you adopting healthy pursuits, ice baths, cold water therapy, meditation, yoga, breath work, walking out in nature with two crazy dogs? Are you doing the things that you should be doing? Eating a well-balanced diet? Yeah, I purport low carb, high fat for most people. Diet's very particular to the person, but low carb, high fat for testosterone, intermittent fasting. So again, wake up, go hunt, go gather, eat. That's the reward. Then calm, hopefully a bit of nookie, then sleep. Then exercise. Yep, just find something that you enjoy. You don't have to hit the gym. Find something that you enjoy. We are physical beings in a world of psychological stress. Address the stress, address this. You can't help others. If your cup is not full, with low testosterone, your cup's not full. We replace the testosterone. Is your cup full? No. You address the parasympathetic nervous system, as we've just spoken about, and you also be a little bit selfish because you can't help others if you can't help yourself. Lead by example. Be the director of your own real-time movie apply a level of objectivity to your subjective experience and do what yeah you guessed it go earn your reward